Here's your reminder. Go to John's house. Alexa, thank you. Oh, you can't make that up. Here's your reminder. Alexa, thank you. God. Here's your reminder. Alexa, stop. Can't make this stuff up. Just can't make it up, everybody. Good morning, I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. We are here to talk about the CD Projekt Red lawsuit. It's not a lawsuit yet, it's just a threat. Welcome to our show, the Lawful Masses Legal Education Channel here on YouTube. Good morning, everyone. Thought I'd wake you up with a little, uh, with a little bit of a surprise live stream this morning. Also, hey, in the studio this morning with me here is none other than Nico, the Golden Retriever. Good morning, good morning, everyone. This will be a brief live stream. This will be the briefest of live streams. We have literally four things to go over, and I have a job to go get to, so I wanted to get on the air this morning with you and get this out because I know how excited all of you are to hear about this lawsuit. So join me as we look at the CD Projekt Red not lawsuit. All right, good morning, everyone. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. This is the CD Projekt Red uh, announcement that they had on their website, I believe it was yesterday, October 2nd. A receipt of a demand for payment submitted on behalf of Mr. Andrew Sapkowski. Um, allegedly, this is a demand in uh, Warsaw, in Poland. So this involves Polish copyright law. It involves EU copyright law. Yours truly doesn't know anything about that. Have a great day, everybody. It's uh, It's been a great show. No, of course I am kidding. Um, we are going to try and figure out together what in the heck is going on here. It says here that the notice indicates that Mr. Sapowski expects payment of additional royalties beyond what has been contractually agreed upon, and it attaches the notice. The company, CD Projekt Red, uh, says in their opinion, the demands expressed in the notice are groundless with regard to merit and the stipulated amount, which I think is like 60 million Polish lotties or something like that. <clears throat> we'll get to that. The demand is, is next. The person making the demand is and Andres, and Andres, I'm going to call him Andrew, Andrew Sapowski, and he is allegedly the original author of the Witcher series. Just root beer. And he sold the rights to the Witcher series for uh, apparently a paltry amount of something like 9,500 bucks. I highly recommend you go check out Yong Ye or Yong Ye's video here. Um, let me post a link in chat. Don't check it out this very second, of course, but as soon as we're done here, and I'll post this VOD, and this will be in the VOD as a card and an end screen. Um, I think his video really does a good job of pointing out as much as, as, as you can. I don't think he went into the actual law. The demand letter that Mr. Sapowski's lawyers sent was also attached. And it is here. Greetings. Acting in our capacity as plenipotentiaries, I'm assuming is some kind of sec euphemism for lawyer uh, or representatives. Uh, uh, I think I've heard the word before, but it's just that's such an archaic word over here in the States. We hereby notify you that we have been charged with seeking payment for copyright royalties due to our principal in association with the use of his work in various fields, particularly as concerns creation and distribution of computer games. The principal would, of course, be Mr. Andres Sapowski or An Andrew. I don't know. As is known, you have concluded several agreements concerning the use of Mr. Sapowski's, Sapkowski's work. However, these agreements cannot effectively indemnify you against future claims. This is due to the fact that the basis for the claims herein expressed is Article 44 of the Act on Copyright and Related Rights. 
the aforementioned clause is first and foremost unconditionally binding. And then there's a citation here. I really don't know how to read Polish law citations. Ustawa o prawe. Oh, yeah, I'm not even going to try this. And furthermore, it may be invoked when the compensation remitted to the author is too low, given the benefits obtained in association with the use of the author's work. And this is where my mind goes boom, because wait a second, there's no such thing in copyright law. And then I have to remember I'm an arrogant American and there is other copyright law in the world. And so... Maybe there's just something in Polish or EU copyright law that covers this. But in America, we don't have any, in US America, we don't have anything like this. If you contract away your rights in a copyrighted work, and then that copyrighted work becomes insanely profitable, absurdly profitable, you don't have some extra right to then come back and say, but you made a whole bunch of money, so I should too. However, as a U.S. law student in copyright, we were always talking about, hey, there's these things called moral rights over in the EU and in some other countries. What are moral rights? They're kind of softer rights. They're economic rights, and they are integrity rights. They are respect rights that you can't disrespect the author or you can't disrespect the work or you can't alter the work without the without – the, not without the permission of the author, not just as a copyright, but as a moral right, as a you're altering the author's work, not just altering a copyrighted work, but the, you don't have permission from the author. And then there seems to be this economic right, which we're about to discover. So let's get back to that and get to it. The latter condition is considered fulfilled if the compensation remitted to the author is too low by a factor of at least two. These exact circumstances exist in Mr. Sapkowski's case, where the aforementioned factor is significantly greater than two, even egregiously so, they say. It may be assumed that standard royalty rates associated with the use of the work are approximately 5 to 15 percent. In addition, this percentage value should be greater than the corresponding provisions of your... My, my mouse just literally started going the other direction. Okay, now it's back. Thus, <laughs> in addition, this percentage value should be greater than the corresponding provisions of your contracts with the author, which pertain to the use of his works in the company's ancillary activities, merchandising, and such. Thus, even adopting a rather conservative approach and minimizing expectations, it may be concluded that the compensation should be at least 6% of profits obtained, Consequently, even acknowledging any compensation the author may have already received and taking into account the increase in sales revenue related to the Witcher 3 video game together with its expansions, we may determine that as of now the claim is for at least 60 million Polish slotty. I don't know. Uh, Alexa, how much is 60 million Polish slotty in U.S. dollars? 60 million plane is 16.1 million dollars. By the way, there are more things to try. Just say... Alexa, stop. Jeez. Overly helpful. <laughs> we would also be remiss to fail to notice that basing our claims on the aforementioned legal ground is rather advantageous for your company. Careful reading of your contracts concluded with the author might lead one to conclude that if the company did effectively acquire any copyright, it concerned only the first in a series of games and therefore distribution of all other games, including expansions, add-ons, is unlawful. Naturally, we do not intend to engage in a debate with you. I can't tell if they mean a legal debate or we're just not going to talk about it right now um, or if they mean we're not going to pursue this claim. Uh, however, having access to your own legal department and external law firms, you may relatively easily determine that in the best case, the aforementioned contracts do not conform to even rudimentary due diligence principles. And even if one were to demonstrate that the successive contracts confirmed the alleged transfer of copyrights for all the games, the subject claim is nevertheless rooted in legal regulations in this scope, particularly Article 43 of the Act on Copyright and Related Rights. 
The brief analysis presented above in no way exhausts the pool of arguments. We are fully aware of the author's claim expressed herein is not a typical request that demanding payment of dozens of millions of, of zlotties is not an everyday occurrence. We nevertheless wish to reassure you that the case has been under preparation for a fairly long time, that the author is fully aware of the scenarios which may unfold depending on your actions. Even more importantly, both we and the author are determined and prepared to see this matter through to a fully successful conclusion. Even so, as is true in every case, and particularly true in this instance, considering the specific relationship between you and Mr. Stepkowski, the author's nature and character, and also your own standing and business interests, we are prepared to settle the matter in an amicable uh, and expeditious and quiet manner. Both we and you are, after all, fully aware that the uh, even going public with a copyright claim may negatively impact the group's reputation and further growth. This is particularly true if the claim concerns your core activity and your most important product. We cannot reasonably expect that the negative consequences of the fact that Mr. Stepkowski has not received his due compensation and furthermore that the validity of your copyright contracts has been called into question may translate into a decrease in stock prices significant enough to exceed the demands. Holy crap, this is starting to sound like extortion, guys. I mean, really. Where, you know, you'd better pay up because you don't want the publicity of a copyright lawsuit isn't illegal to say, but holy crap, that sounds like bordering on something unethical to me. Uh, like, why not just stick to the merits of your claims if they're so strong? If your claims are good, you wouldn't need to say stuff like, we also back up our claims with the fact that you're going to look bad. What? This is why, as of now, we have not publicized the fact that we have undertaken this, etc. Well, so what happened was CD Projekt Red put it out on their website, possibly because they, they might have to. I, mean, I don't know the law in EU and all that, but the CD Projekt Red, I believe, is a public company. So if they are receiving notice of a lawsuit, they have to notify their investors through the traditional channels. And if that's what they have to do, that's what they have to do. You can't say in your letter, no, we're not going to publicize this and then send it to a public company who has to publicize it. I mean, come on here. There's some games being played is what I'm saying. I would also like to mention that we are aware not only of your intent to actually and legitimately purchase all copyright from Mr. Sapkowski, but of specific offers which have been extended in this regard. As of right now, we cannot assure you that the outcome you seek will materialize. But we w may certainly notify you of the author's preliminary willingness to engage in discussions concerning this matter, and that expeditious payment of the claim expressed in this notice would definitely have a highly positive effect on the prospects for finding a comprehensive solution. Considering the above, reply within 14 days and before October 19th. And then they have redacted the email addresses. Um, so once again, uh, another YouTuber, Yong Ye, already did a great uh, a summary of some of this, so I'm not going to go over absolutely everything. I want to get straight to the law. Well, I initially found the wrong law. I got to a German website, but it said some things that made me think that there might be something to this. And so then I found uh, this, the Act number 83, February 4, 1994, Poland act on copyright and neighboring rights. And if you go all the way down, and I'll spare your eyes, if you go all the way down to Article 43 and 44, Article 44 does say, in the event of a gross discrepancy between the remuneration of the author and the benefits of the acquirer of the author's economic rights or the licensee, the author may request to the court for a due increase of his or her remuneration. Now that's super mind blowing because in the US we have nothing like this. If you contract away your rights, you have contracted away your rights. Heck, in the US, we have a thing with contract where if you make <clears throat> an agreement that is so long, no human could possibly ever read it in their lifetime, but it says in there, I have read and understand the terms of this agreement, and then they check that and click OK, you're deemed to have known that entire agreement. You're bound to that entire agreement, even if there's no way any human being could ever read the whole thing or all of the agreements they come across in, in a lifetime or a day or a year. But it doesn't matter because the the right to contract in the U.S. is sacrosanct. And if you contracted away your rights, you contracted away your rights. 
Nothing the court can do. Remember, this was YouTube. Somebody sued YouTube and said YouTube can't be so discriminatory uh, in, be, in, you know, in promoting certain channels but not promoting others based on political views or whatever, nothing violating the community guidelines, just that YouTube seems to promote certain stuff. And it didn't matter because YouTube has a contract with those people that says YouTube can do whatever it wants. Almost literally in so much language, we reserve the right to monetize, demonetize, publish, not publish, whatever, videos at our will or at our discretion. And that was more than enough for the court to say, sorry, you don't have any claim. All this other great stuff you're saying doesn't matter because you didn't get past this first threshold question. So in EU or in Poland, apparently they have something. Uh, they did refer to Article 43 before. Let's see what that says. Let's scroll up. If the article, if the contract does not indicate whether the transfer of the author's economic rights or the granting of a license was free of charge, the author shall have the right to remuneration. If the contract does not specify the author's remuneration, such remuneration shall be set, taking into account the scope of the right granted. So I don't know how much of a claim they have under Article 43. And I do not know, let me be very, very clear, I am not an EU attorney, I do not know case law behind this Article 44. There will be case law behind this. But, um, making almost no assumptions, if, there, if this means what it says it means, it seems to override a contract. And so if CD Projekt Red has made so much money off of The Witcher concept or story or whatever, that it constitutes a gross discrepancy, then the author has the right to request the court find an increase, which is really, really very, very strange. But here's how I see it might play out. If the auth original author sold something, what was it, like 20 or 30 years ago or something, and they sold it for $9,500 the equivalent of 9,500 US dollars, and they thought that they had a good deal at the time, that's enough for us in the US. He's sent away his rights, and what happens after that happens. Now, in the event of a gross discrepancy between the remuneration of the author for the benefits of the acquirer and the author's economic rights, or the, the author may request a court. So in the, but, but what's the gross discrepancy here? <clears throat> they didn't buy a painting and then resell the painting for a lot of money. Follow me here. They did not buy The Witcher 3 and then sell The Witcher... They did not buy a game called The Witcher 3 and then resell a game called The Witcher 3 for vastly more money. They bought somebody's underlying story for $9,500 and, and allegedly the rights to exploit it. And then they made a video game. Sapkowski did not make a video game. Sapkowski doesn't like video games. Sapkowski doesn't say he hates video games, but he says he doesn't like video games, doesn't play video games. So Sapkowski wrote the underlying story concept of a professional monster hunter for hire. And then CD Projekt Red made a multi-billion dollar company out of that story. They did not buy the Mona Lisa for $9,500 and then resell the Mona Lisa for $2 billion. They did something in between. They, they did something in between. I once caught a lawsuit. And... I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing how this plays out because I can't imagine a world where Sapkowski is automatically due extra money because CD Projekt Red built a big company out of the story he sold them for a small amount of money. But, but, I am an arrogant American and I assume things like this law is bullshit. It's, it might not be. It might not be under Polish law. And, and CD Projekt Red is a Polish company, allegedly in Warsaw. So, okay. If that's what their law says, then I might disagree with the law, but I can't say that's not what the law says. 
So what are we gonna do? I don't know. What do you guys think about this? <laughs> yeah, I I really don't I really don't know either. If, if this is going to be a fun one to watch play out, and that's what it's based on is is that that line right there in the event of a gross discrepancy between the remuneration of the author and the benefits of the acquirer. Yep. This is going to be a fun one to watch, guys. I don't really know how this one's going to play out. That is our live stream. I really have nothing more to say about it. It's hugely different than, than what we have here in the U.S., and we know nothing more about it. Oh, by the way, there is no lawsuit yet. This is just a threat of a lawsuit, so I expect that we'll definitely hear more about this as time goes on. So thank you very much for joining us. This is Lawful... I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. And this is Lawful Masses, a community-supported legal education channel with a cameo appearance by Nico the Dog. Thank you very, very much to all of our Patreon supporters. Starting with our $50 plus supporters in the month of October, Jonathan Doe, Richard Fournier, Michael Jones, Spirit Bear, Yann Negre, Grunkle Tia Marie, Terry Crisp, did I say Michael Jones, Michael Pierce, William Gonzalez, Vera Mantain, Kyle Mudrock, Andy, Evie, Gavin Barnard, and John Steele. Sorry, everything's out of order. It's a live stream. Thank you to our new $500 plus supporter for, I guess it'll be November, Justin Rogers. And thank you to the 200 plus $5 plus supporters who are scrolling on the LED panel and won't be on the crawl because this is live and I don't know how to do that yet. So, again, thank you for joining me. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. What do you mean, why don't I explain what the law is? I just said the whole stream was about explaining the law. We don't have this in the U.S. In the U.S., you contract away your rights. In, the, in Poland, they have this clause thing where you can do this in the event of a gross discrepancy. That was the explanation. Sorry if that wasn't enough, but uh, I still hope you have a good day. Love you very much. Say hi and bye to Nico the dog and we will see you next time. It'll be up as a VOD. It will be up as a VOD. Why we did a short one. Realize Gilsa is stuck outside, so we're not going to get a cameo from Gilsa. All right, guys, have a good one. Love you all. I'll see you in the next video and uh, on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. on Twitch. Have a good one. <laughs>